Good evening. This is Tina. Welcome to the new playlist, Java Persistent APIs. And the framework we are choosing is Hibernate. And uh, this video is an uh, introduction of uh, Hibernate. So let's start. When we do OO design, Okay, oh, sorry, when we do domain-driven design, it requires us to have the OO model after the design process, right? And uh, in a running application, when we took a snapshot and uh, we can get the state of the application and those states are held by the domain, uh, domain model or objects, right? But eventually, we need to save those informations to the database. Suppose now we want to save into the relational database. So how to grab the information from the OO model and eventually save into the relational database tables, right, as a record? There are some mismatch between them if we want to do that, because we can not directly to do that. Uh, and one way you can do that, we can use in plain JDBC, we retrieve the information from the domain model, then we're using a SQL to uh, persist into the database. But if we want to directly work with the OO, those models, and without using the SQL, there's a mismatch how to do that. So first, we talk about the mismatch, okay, between OO and uh, how about uh, we do like this way? First, we talk about a mismatch, okay, okay, and uh, which is between OO and the relational database. If you save into a MongoDB prop, uh, no, 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 non SQL database, you are still facing the similar issue. Okay. Okay. So, what are the mismatch between them? First, suppose I want to uniquely identify two objects. Here, uh, we think about Java, okay? Two objects. We were using address, right? If the two objects the address is the same, we think the object one is equals object two, right? But in relational database, if we want to identify two records, okay, two rows are the same, we're using what? We're using primary key, okay? This is one mismatch. Second, in OO design, okay, we have what? We have uh, relationships. The relationships, there's a uh, big of them is called associations, right? Associations has what? Has a unidirectional and has a bidirectional relationship, right? Right. And also it has a one to one relationship. Okay? It has a one to many relationship. And it has a many to one relationship. And it has a many to many relationship, right? For associations in OO. But for relational database, do we have those? Okay, we don't have. In relational database, everything is bi directional, there's no unidirectional. And it only has a primary key. Oh, sorry, 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 not primary key, foreign key. Foreign key, that's a foreign key. Based from the foreign key, you can get it. Well, when, we, when we're using foreign key, it's bi-directional. Or it has a join table. Some people will call link table or join table. Basically, you have an extra table to link the relationship between other tables, okay? Then you can do that, okay? 
So here we have uni bidirectional. Here in our DBN, everything is bidirectional. And we don't have those relationships. It only has a foreign key and joint tables. Okay? And uh, in OO, there's a big thing. Yes, called what? Uh, the of one of the four basic principles in all, like uh, abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, right? You have a parent class, you have a subclass, but in our DBMs, do we have inheritance? No, we don't have inheritance here. Okay, and uh, what others? Um, what others? Uh, okay, suppose we have associations in order to retrieve data with we do through what? We do through the associations. Suppose you want to get all the addresses the part of, about a person, you are using what? You are using person dot get addresses, right? So we can access data through associations this is one example right this is association suppose the person has a collection of address but uh, do we have associations here no then how to access information you using what you using queries and uh, joins in a join out oh you sorry in a join out join left join those joins so here we have a mismatch here, which means it prevent us to directly save the domain object into the RDBMS, right? Uh, also, uh, uh, no, no, relational database. But we really want to directly work with the OO, okay? Persist the object instead of you to write a query. So here we need something here. What do we need? We need something here. Uh, let me draw it. We need a bridge, right? We need a bridge. We need a mapping, which is map our OO object into DB and RDB relational database tables. Okay. We need a map the uh, 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 what was the object into what tables. Here, so I think we should be using the class. Okay, okay. And we need to map the properties inside the, the classes, map to the columns into the tables. And how to do that? You have uh, two ways. First is using annotation. The other one we can use in XML. Annotations we can use in XML two ways. So, which framework can do this bridge? Which framework? Okay, it's the Hibernate. Okay, before talking about Hibernate, we need to understand the JPA, uh, Java Persistent APIs, Persistence APIs. So actually, is yes, the JPA does the bridge, okay? Ma have a mapping, map your OO object into the relational database. And uh, Java Persistent APIs is the documentation. Not documentation, I should say specification. Specification. Okay, JPA is a specification, which means it describes what kind of features it should be included, but it doesn't have its own implementations. The implementations is leave to the different vendors. But uh, nowadays, most of the JPA, the, uh, uh, the features is uh, almost identical to the Hibernate. The reason for that is when the, as the time grows, right, we have a certain stage we need to map, you, we need to map OO into the database. But at that time, JPA is, is not, uh, 
JPA is not existing. So we have so many vendors like Eclipse, Hibernate, uh, Open JPA. We have so many vendors, uh, MyBetis. We have so many vendors which provide a bridge for you to map OO to the uh, relational database. But different vendors have their own way to do the thing. So after that, we have an organization comes out. Okay, how about we make a sim uh, specification to standardize those uh, bridge? Then JPA comes out, which is the Java Persistence APIs. So JPA comes out to comes out to standardize standardize the bridge. So it comes with a specification, and different vendors, if they want to have their own implementation, they have to follow the specification. And the most popular one is Hibernate. Okay, Hibernate is the implementation. Okay, implementation of JPA. If I remember correctly, they have some other like a, a open open link or something. I couldn't remember. But anyway, it has uh, some. Um, it uh, Hibernate is uh, not the only one. It has Open JPA. I think it's called Open JPA. I think this one is already being open source, bought by Eclipse or Oracle. So it ha it's not the only one. It has others. If you are interested, you can take a look at. But Hibernate is the most popular one being used. Okay, and uh, since we are using JPA, okay, and uh, we choosing using the Hibernate, and Hibernate has their own APIs. But when we do when we program, we prefer you are using JPA APIs because if we choose to using Hibernate APIs, later on, if you want to switch to Open JPA, another vendor, you have to change the code. But if we using JPA APIs, when you switch from Hibernate to Open JPA, there's no need to change the code because all other vendors follow the same specification. Okay, so this is the relationship between JPA and Hibernate. Why I feel this one is very strange. Oh, I think probably this one, JPA, Java Persistence APIs. Okay, and the next one, where when we do the N tier application, when we have an N tier architecture, where is the Hibernate or Java Persistence API located? So in a typical NTR architecture, right? Oh, let me change switch back to the black, okay? And we have uh, what kind of layers? Presentation, right? We have a presentation layer. Presentation layer is a layer for model view controller which means you have the view and the controller in the presentation. And presentation, after that, you have a service, okay? Suppose I put the model, domain model in here, domain model in a layer here, okay? This is a domain model. Your service, we are, the, your service, we are talking with the domain model, right? Your service, we are using the domain model. Probably your presentation in the controller, you will also using domain model, okay? Domain model is a central, okay, encapsulated data. And we have a data access layer, uh, some call persistence layer, and uh, some we are call DLO, okay, uh, or some, uh, so, no, some call persistence, some call repository, repository, some call DLO layer. Uh, have lost name, but the main idea is from this layer you talk with the database, right? You talk with the database. So here we will have a DL data access object, okay? So this layer, this this layer, persistent layer, is where you hibernate the framework to being used, and for the domain model, this layer you will have. Uh, 
the domain models and you are annotate these domain models using JPA annotations. Okay. And those JPA annotations will provide a bridge to map the domain models into the database tables. Okay. So this is a brief ideas about the Hibernate and uh, hope after this video you understand uh, what I'm talking about. And if you have any question, you can leave a comment below. And see you next time. Bye-bye.